Well, my name's Joseph Malloy, third generation naval officer, grandson of uh, Irish immigrants on my father's and mother's side. The Malloys have served for 109 years, 1908 through 2017 right now. It's going to keep on going. I would say the Navy Malloy story starts in 1908. My grandfather was born in Boston. Henry F. Malloy, at 18 years old, he joined the Navy. He joined the Navy to join the Great White Fleet and ended up shoveling coal. First started shoveling coal, became an expert mechanic as a sidebar in 1909, his second year in, he was the Atlantic Fleet boxing champion. Back then, every ship had boxers, and they used to compete on the big battleships. And he actually has a, we have a cup at home, a silver cup that my wife had refurbished and given to my younger son, who was a plebe summer boxing champion. So he did that, and then he became a, basically a master mechanic with the Navy, working on early submarines, and then actually on airplanes, and was working down in Pensacola. World War I was coming on. By then, he was also a senior first class uh, petty officer and they had nationwide tests, and he took an exam and was then promoted to Ensign and served in World War I on destroyers in the North Atlantic. My father's name was Charles Sullivan Malloy, and he's class in 1956 in the Naval Academy, a uh, surface line officer, so he did part of what my grandfather did, and then he went engineering duty, so he was uh, very bright and did computer research at Monterey. His expertise was in computers, and a sidebar about him I didn't realize till much later was he was an expert on very high power computers, and one of his side jobs was once a month he would bring a Dr. Seymour Cray from the Cray Computer Company. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to introduce the individual, the Thomas Edison of supercomputing, Seymour Cray. Well, Seymour Cray would come out once a month to the National Security Agency right here in Maryland, and my father would travel with him. I did not know that for many years later. My father was basically with an armed briefcase and carrying a gun and travel with a locked briefcase with Seymour Cray to the National Security Agency when they were starting to buy supercomputers. He learned from my, my grandfather, imagination, you know, working hard, love of the Navy. And he got me going in terms of there was nothing he couldn't solve. Definition of service for us was being loyal to the country, and then finding something that would be worthwhile to do. Many people come to the academy and spend four years trying to figure out what they want. I came in, and on the first weekend in September of 1975, when I was a plebe, I went out and visited the USS Finback. And the submarine had just come back from a special operation, and I saw this really cool, neat, small submarine. The crew was very, very close. It was interesting things. They couldn't talk about where they'd been, but they're closest with each other. And you started hearing rumors about the submarine force and intelligence and surveillance and reconnaissance. I walked down that submarine, and I knew that's what I wanted to do. I'm a submariner by training primarily, so two-thirds of my 38-year career has been at sea. The other part of my life has been working on developing Navy budgets and program plans for the future. Rear Admiral Joseph Malloy, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Budget, talked about the Navy and Marine Corps portion of the budget. We are deploying forward. We are continuing to support all the forces forward. We are preparing all the ships and Marines to deploy in 14 and doing the ship as much of the ship maintenance in 15 as we can to support those operations. So now that's when I come back uh, working for the submarine force on planning and programming submarines of the future. And that's what led me then to be in the Pentagon on 9-11. I remember walking in that morning. The Pentagon was, you know, busy like the Pentagon is. Give me a location. Third aircraft hijack heading towards Washington. The plane came in directly under me. Yeah, it went in the Pentagon. When it, when it, looks like it went in the Pentagon. All of a sudden, in my seat, I was knocked back like this because the whole Pentagon shook. And the Pentagon is a pretty good sized building, the largest office building in the world. But I felt like a truck had locked its brakes on the highway and was shaking. All of a sudden, ceiling tiles fell out of the ceiling. All the ventilator ducts had up, upside down mushroom clouds of smoke coming out. And then fire filled the windows in front of me. One of the admirals in my office yelled, hey, everybody out. And I said, Admiral, I'm right behind you. And I think I was the only one in my office. There were 10 of us in the office that day. I actually picked up my classic submarine training. I picked up my hat, 
my wallet, my keys, my cell phone, and actually had my stuff, went over and turned off the television set. The people in the front were gotten out. I was walking around the side, and I saw everyone heading out of the office. And I was the last one out, and I shut the door. But I realized I hadn't actually verified no one had stood up and banged their head. And you could, by then, there was a lot of smoke filling in. So I took my, it was a, a top secret office, so I took my badge, swiped my way back in, and went to every single cubicle to make sure there was no one in the spaces. There was no one there. I went back out of the space, got to the door, swiped it to set the cyber lock and set the combination lock because the safes were still open and we had a top secret space. By then I look around, everyone's gone down the hallways in each direction and uh, I realize, hey, this, I'm starting to leave this a little bit late. It's starting to get pretty thick smoke. So I bend over and you know walk like they teach you in school. I get down to the end of my little corridor and there's a major corridor and that's the one where the plane had come in. As I look to the right at the far end, later on that part collapsed. But right now you can just see a raging fire the far end. And there was another Navy captain like me coming along. He was in charge of the people in the D ring. I was in charge of the people in the C ring. Um, or I was the EA for that ring. And then we went out to the big fire door was coming shut. Another captain put his hand up and then he and I got out and we were the last two in that floor on that section of the Pentagon and then the fire door went shut. got out and went out to the outside because I wanted to go back around and see if I could help. We got out to the Pentagon parking lot and all of a sudden they said, everybody stop, and they said, everybody out. I came home and just sat down and couldn't believe. Got up the next day and went back into work and the world has been at war ever since. My two boys ended up going to the Naval Academy. Tyler is an explosive ordnance officer, and then my youngest son is a SEAL candidate when he graduates in a few days. From the 14th Company, Connor A. Malloy. I have no idea what the boys do, but they're both going to have fascinating stories to tell in the future, too, about what happens with the country, what happens with their careers, and what they do. <laughs> and, you know, the pressure is, there's no pressure on them. If they want to do five years, it's great, because anyone who's ever served has served. You know, whether you did two years in the Navy or you do 38 years like I did, it's all part of service and you're part of something bigger than yourself. happy naval officer. I'm a very happy submariner. You know, my personality is I'm a happy person. But most people in the service, if they're in the service and stay, it's because they really do love it and they love the people around them. And so they end up being very happy. On the whole, most people that really enjoy the military realize, and you see that flag, it really is important to do, and you really enjoy it. And you don't view it as toil, you just view it as, that's part of my job, and that's what I do. In many cases, you love every minute of it. This is such a tremendous Navy family. I'd like to ask the whole family to come on up. It's a, a snapshot of this Malloy 109 years of service. The gel that holds us all together are our families. A Navy career or any career is made up of stories and stories are people. And that's the heart, heart and soul of it. Thank you.